Welcome back, Candy Catholic. Uh, so, yeah, we um, left off uh, today in class talking about the Minoans, right? And, of course, today in class we also talked about all this fun stuff behind me back here, right? Nice uh, Nathan eats bacon meanwhile mommy dances to Charlie's house, right? The eight Greek time periods and how they're going to develop over time and how the Greeks were the very first Westerners and things like that. So, but we're going to keep going through our time periods. And as we know, um, which of the following time periods that we've talked about so far uh, had to do with early settlements and like little relics, pots, and organized farming? Good job, Mike Polite. Uh, that's right, the Neolithic period. And which one had to do more with, uh, which one had to do more with um, just the early invention of a metal that was smelted out of rock? Does anybody know that one? Good job, Katrina. Uh, that's right, the early Bronze Age, okay? So, but now we're in the Minoan period, right? And as we already talked about, the Minoans shot out of a small island called Crete. Well, they didn't shoot out of it, but they settled there, right? And so it was over, it was inside of the uh, Mediterranean Sea. And as we already talked about, we don't really have a lot left behind by them other than a few artifacts, but we do, and we have been able to um, kind of conjure up a lot of ideas about them and using uh, some old historical records and word of mouth records and things that were finally written down. We have ideas of how they lived their lives and uh, different things they contributed to Western society. So one of the big ones is we know that they had a writing system. Okay. Now, the name of the writing system is called Linear A. All right. Now, it's a Minoan writing. It cannot be translated to this day, and it looks like this shenanigans, right? Well, here's the thing. Somebody tell me what kind of language does this look vaguely like? That's exactly right, Steve. That's, uh, it looks kind of like cuneiform, right? And so this is a possibility that they actually achieved like contact with the uh, with the Mesopotamians around this time period. So maybe they adopted one of their early writing systems. And we'll get more into the impacts of that tomorrow. One of my classes, you already heard my favorite word of the day today. And uh, we'll get to more of that with my, my fourth period and my first eighth. We'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. But let's keep going. So they have a writing system. It's called Linear A. Now, the Minoan period also, the biggest legacy that they gave us was their ability to build ships, right? They were masters of the sea, great shipbuilders, and avid traders, okay? So, that is one huge, huge thing. And also, we know one thing from particular, they also competed in competitive sports. Uh, one of the big sports was actually called bull leaping. And we know this because of a fresco, and a fresco is like a painting um, that was left behind on one of the uh, temple walls inside of a palace that I'm going to talk about in about two seconds. All right, anyway, so... But bull leaping or bull fighting was both a sport and a religious ceremony. Do not try this at home because basically the practices of bull leaping, as we can tell so far from this fresco inside of Kenosis, is actually the idea was to taunt the bull into running at you and then to jump completely over it. And as you can see, this guy right here did not fare so well and probably got speared and killed by that bull, right? Now, another thing about the Minoans also, Minoan... M-I-N-O, that prefix means bull, or people are bull people, right? Minoans, as in people of the bull. So, they actually believed that the bull was a very, very sacred animal. And another Greek mythological story is going to shoot out of this entire culture when we get to that, when we talk about Theseus and the Minotaur here in a minute. So, now, the palace that they left behind was called Kenosis, right? It was a great palace and a city home to the legendary King Minos, right? So King Minos is one of the documented kings that they actually kept on the Palace of Kenosis' walls. It was the political center of the Minoan kingdom, and also it was built as a massive labyrinth, right? Now, really, really quick, a labyrinth is actually like a maze-like palace. So a lot of walls, hallways, different doors and exits. And a lot of people say, uh, a lot of historians believe, and remember we believe because we don't have any de definite written records, and if we did, we couldn't translate them because we can't understand their language, uh, believe that it may have been built that way simply because it would be hard to get to the king to assault him in any type of way, and it would also be hard to escape if you were trying to escape with something you stole, right? So, but this is what we believe. Uh, this is actually some of the walls left behind of Kenosis, and it's actually a pretty well-standing relic on the island of Crete. You can actually go visit it today. And also, what early architectural sign can you see from early Greeks that actually carried over into their society? Good job, Analia. Pillars, right? Pillars was a massive, like, uh, massive trend in Greek architecture. We'll talk about the archway with Rome as well, and like, kind of getting up some differences between the Romans and the Greeks later on. But that is Kenosis, and as we can see, it was built in that labyrinth-like style. See all the walls and the different rooms and the hallways and the stairs that go to nowhere? But actually, they went somewhere at some point. 
And this actually is one of the most preserved rooms inside of Kenosis. This is the throne room, right? So we believe that King Minus actually sat here. That was his throne room. And this was an offertory plate. Probably any offerings or sacrifices or animals or anything that the villagers or the outside kingdom dwellers would have brought to offer to the king. And this is what we believe actually Kenosis looked like when it was fully built. So honestly, it's a massive, massive complex. Huge, way ahead of its time. 2000 BC, they were building things on the levels of the Mesopotamians, the, um, the Egyptians, people like that. Uh, so, this again though has very, very definite and very individual artistic styles, including pillars, flat roofs, and also square, and square breaks. Also, the courtyard idea is going to be something, the courtyard is going to be something that actually carries over into Greek architecture for thousands of years. So, anyway, but continuing forward, this is actually one of the blueprint layout maps of the labyrinth inside of Kenosis. Isn't that neat? It's like, like you see all of the different hallways and chambers and secret passageways and different stuff like that. So, continuing forward though, and remember really quick, a labyrinth is a maze and a palace. Now, there is one really, really famous Greek myth about the beasts that apparently dwell inside the labyrinth that is going to carry over, and the Mycenaeans are going to begin to tell that story, and even the Dorians later on during the Dark Ages are going to tell this story. It has to do with this legendary warrior named Theseus, right? So... Theseus is actually trying to woo the heart of King Minos' daughter. And King Minos tells him, well, look, I have stowed my daughter away in the middle of the labyrinth, right? And if you can get to her and find your way out with her safely without dying, then I'll let you marry her. But here's the thing. The uh, King Minos didn't tell him that there was actually a minotaur inside of the labyrinth in the very, very center next to his daughter. So he act or go in there, kill the minotaur, you can marry my daughter. And so what Theseus did is Zeus gives him this magic ball of string that he unwinds as he's going through the labyrinth. That way he can find his way back out again. And that's how he ends up actually killing the Minotaur because he sneaks up on it while he's sleeping. And he kills the Minotaur, finds his way out, and gets to marry the, one, the King Minos' daughter. And this is a picture right there of what the Minotaur people look like. But that right there, that is Theseus and the Minotaur. And he actually stabbed him in the mouth and stuff like that according to Greek mythology. It's very, very cool. Um, one of my favorite stories, actually. Now, some Minoan art that we actually have also shows that they may have given women a higher status because some Minoan art depicts female priests, which is actually unheard of in many ancient civilizations. Now, we do know that women rulers was common in Egypt. However, female priests, not very common at all. So a lot of people believe that religious tolerance towards women started, like, did not start until much, 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 much later in, like, uh, 1500s Europe with the Lutheran church. Now, to think... Uh, that if they would have survived, maybe sexism actually wouldn't be a thing or exist today. This also right here is one of the uh, goddesses of the uh, Minoan people. She's actually a snake goddess. And then also these are two of the depictions of frescoes on the walls. Those are female priestesses. Uh, so, continuing forward though, Minoans also successfully created the very first frescoes. Now, fresco is a form of art using wet plaster and paint. And they're very, very intricate. And also, they weren't seen again since uh, from like the late Roman, uh, late antiquity period in Rome, they also, frescoes weren't seen again until 1450 in Europe. So this is something that the early Greeks created so long ago. And a lot of early Greeks, or a lot of people in the world will not see these frescoes again until much, much later with the birth of the Renaissance. And they're extremely difficult to create even for common today artists. And as you can see, there were a lot of seafaring themes because they were an island people. It's very, very cool stuff. And of course, those are dolphins, right? But that is a fresco. And the really neat thing about a fresco is when it dries, it actually becomes permanent because the paint itself bonds with the plaster, making it almost undamageable unless it's exposed to weather. So these are perfectly preserved inside of the Kenosis Palace today. It's actually very phenomenally interesting. Now, why did they end? We're not really sure. No one is actually certain why the Minoan civilization came to an end, but at about 1400 BC, control of the sea and Crete passed to a different people called the Mycenaeans, right? So we look, if we look behind me, right, we went uh, Nathan, eats bacon, Neolithic, early bronze, Minoans, and then we have the Mycenaean period when they were at their dominance, right? So continuing forward, though, the Mycenaean period was from 1600 to about 1100 BC. Now, first and foremost, where do we think they came from? It's not like they just showed up in Greece, right? So the Mycenaeans actually, we believe, came from the southern, Gla or excuse me, the grasslands of southern Russia to settle on Peloponnese. Now, you have to understand when we get there in about two seconds, there are two separate parts to Greece. There is mainland Greece, which includes Peloponnese, and then there are all the islands and smaller island nations off the coast of Greece. Now, they traded and actually learned a heck of a lot of stuff from the Minoans. And again, cultural diffusion, we'll talk about that stuff tomorrow, but one of the, like my classes better have been freaking out and getting excited when I said that word. 
So, but as we continue forward, the Mycenaeans lived in peace with the Minoans as far as we know until about 1500 BC when we believe that there is a chance that they may have attacked and destroyed them. Oh well, right? So, one of the other big Mycenaean, or well, really, really quickly, there is Mycenae next to where Corinth, Argos, and Tiryns was. Athens was over here on the coastland of Peloponnese. Sparta was down here. That right there, this area, that's Peloponnese, this big southern chunk of Greece right here. And down here, that is Crete, and the, uh, the uh, stronghold of Knossos in the Minoan kingdom was over here. So the Mycenaeans, we believe, may have sailed over, had a lot of trade with the uh, early Minoans, but they may have ended up destroying them because they were actually a pretty warlike people. And so one of the biggest things left behind also was their writing system. It's called Linear B. We actually discern theirs from uh, Minoan writing because it's a little bit different, but it also cannot be translated. So the reasons, were, again, why we actually named them Linear A and B is simply because we don't actually know what they're called. We know cuneiform, according to the Mesopotamians, that was actually the name of its that written language, or Sanskrit in some other languages. So... Continuing forward, though, that right there, that is linear B. And also, like I said, cannot be translated. And But the Mycenaeans created a huge stronghold, and they actually called it Mycenae. And the only way in and out of it was actually through this thing called the Lion's Gate. And we are going to stop there for the day, all right? So I need you to make sure that you got all this stuff. And really, really quickly, I expect to see good notes from these yes i'm calling some of you boys and little girls out because some of y'all are only writing what you think you need to know you need to know all of it i don't say things or put it on here if it's not important but you just need to learn to not write every single little word down okay so but the mycenaean stronghold was massive it's called mycenaea it's called the lion's gate we're going to talk about the military prowess of the mycenaeans tomorrow and talk about how we believe that they may have been destroyed by another group of the dorians and actually how they probably had a war with troy and etc 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 so we're gonna stop there for the evening now and i can't wait to see you guys in the morning see y'all in the morning